20 years ago, Father William had the opportunity to take a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. In Nazareth, the tour guide pointed out the church that was built on the spot where they were going to throw Jesus off the cliff. But there was no cliff. Later, he pointed out the other church that was built at the other site where they were going to throw Jesus off the cliff. There was no cliff there either. But I don't want to discuss St. Luke's knowledge of geography, but something else. No prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. Almost 40 years ago, I started attending conferences. Anglican novice guardians, monastic formation directors, priors, vocations directors, once even one on the new can code of canon law and how it applied to monastic communities. I heard a lot of talks and met a lot of people, some of whom became good friends. One talk was from someone explaining how he had come to join his order. An inspirational speaker told about the wonders of life and community and was so inspiring that the speaker joined the community. Once he was there, he found out that the speaker was hardly ever at home. He was always out giving inspirational talks. When he was home, he didn't participate in community life. He was not highly regarded by the people who lived in the community. In another workshop, I was telling a friend about this wonderful book I had read about community life. It's still on the Novitiate reading list. It so happened that my friend was the spiritual director of the author of the book. He told me that she didn't live in the community, but had a separate apartment. Her community didn't think much of her book. Familiarity might not breed contempt, but it does breed familiarity. But these people did have genuine insights, even if they fell short in living them. Prophets without honor. There's a story some version of which you've probably heard about a monastery where everything went bad. The monks were rude to each other, stopped going to church, and went out to taverns and brothels and got into fights. The abbot was in despair. He went off to the woods to find the holy hermit and after a long search he found him and told him about the situation and asked for help. The hermit told him that he had no advice. Everything seemed to be getting worse. Evil seemed to be in the ascendant everywhere and good in retreat. Despondent, the abbot turned to go. The hermit said, by the way, one of the monks is the Messiah. The abbot 
returned to the monastery and somehow managed to get the monks assembled for a meeting and told them about his visit with the hermit and his lack of advice. One of the old monks asked, was that all he had to say? And the aunt said, well, just as I was leaving, he told me that one of the monks was the Messiah. The monks laughed. But later, they started thinking about it. What if this brother or that one might be the Messiah? They started treating each other with respect. They started going to church. They started to take their lives seriously. They became a model community. This story didn't happen, but it's true. Well, the monk next to inquire is not the Messiah. The Messiah has already come, but they didn't recognize him. It nailed him to a cross. For the sake of that monk next to inquire, who has become one body with that Messiah. So in a sense, he is. So be kind. You will fail, but take heart and do not despair. As one of the desert fathers answered when asked, what do you do in the monastery? We fall down and we get up again. Keep getting up. Do what you can. And remember what Archbishop Tutu said, God has very little standards.